we are in a certain historical context now, Dr. Ari Davis, and uh, we are very interested in knowing your uh, analysis of this uh, current situation. What do you see is happening now, and where are we going? When you introduce me correctly, although somewhat uh, exaggeratedly, uh, at the beginning of this interview, the correct introduction is indeed that uh, I am a member of Fatah Revolutionary Council. I have also been trusted to be the secretary of the political committee of the Revolutionary Council. And uh, <coughs> uh, I would want also to highlight your introduction in respect of the Jewish National Fund because I believe the Jewish National Fund and its alleged <coughs> concern with the environment is uh, uh, duplicit, just I think is the term. Du duplicit. Well, it's duplicit. And it is, in my experience, important to shed light on the duplicity, to challenge the duplicity, and to challenge the Jewish National Fund in courts uh, with a view to uh, get a ruling that nullifies the charitable tax exempt status of the Jewish National Fund in every country where such a status has been granted to the JNF, notably in Canada, uh, and I uh, will subsequently elaborate on that. But I thought to uh, uh, focus on the second section of our interview on the Oslo Accords. Because when the Oslo Accords came to light, when, when the Oslo Channel came to light and the Oslo Accords signed initially uh, on the lawn of the White House and <clears throat> in 1993, I found myself in the camp of, uh, that had had very serious reservations in respect of the Oslo Accords. Not quite the camp that condemned the Oslo Accords outright, but, <clears throat> but the camp that had uh, serious reservations. And I'll specify my reservations specifically, and that is that every journey of national liberation as uh, a, <coughs> a progression and regression, achievements and setbacks. The journey of national liberation, any movement of national liberation, is no picnic and cannot accept the sequence of achievements indefinitely. There are achievements and setbacks. And Oslo is definitely a setback. An achievement, for instance, in my view, is the accreditation of international legitimacy to the Palestine Liberation Organization as the representative of the Palestinian as a whole in its entirety, and uh, the accreditation of the PLO as observer member in the United Nations. That's a huge achievement. Oslo is no such achievement. Oslo is a setback. My quarrel with my leadership has been that that setback has been marketed as a victory. It's no victory, it is a setback. Had my leadership addressed uh, uh, our people, the Palestinian people, in terms of, well, national liberation has achievements and setbacks, this is a setback. We have no choice except signing the bottom line I would have no quarrel with the leadership. That's why leadership are elected, to assess the overall balance of circumstance and to take a decision even if the decision 